In this video, we're going to consider the blending process, which is a nonlinear process, and we're going to calculate an approximate linear model for that process. We're going to consider the dynamic equation for mass fraction x leaving the tank. We derived this dynamic model previously using mass balances. So this is a nonlinear model. And we're going to refer to this right-hand side as our function f. It depends on time-varying quantities, volume v, mass fraction x. Now this is the mass fraction in the tank and leaving the tank because the tank is well mixed. We also have inlet mass flow rates w1 and w2. And in this case, we're going to assume that our density rho is constant. We're also going to assume that the inlet mass fractions, x1 and x2, are constant for this example. And now we're going to calculate the linearization of this nonlinear dynamic equation. For the left-hand side, we'll substitute in deviation variables. So instead of x, we'll have x bar, the steady state value, plus x prime, the deviation from steady state. And because x bar is a constant, we can then simplify that to dx prime dt. So the deviation is time varying, but the steady state value is a constant. And then we're going to approximate the right-hand side by a first-order Taylor series approximation. So we start off by evaluating f at the steady state, and then we add on linear terms associated with each of the independent variables in our function f. So we have df dv evaluated at steady state, we'll use ss for steady state, times v prime plus df dx evaluated at steady state times x prime plus df dw1 evaluated at steady state times w1 prime plus df w2 evaluated at steady state times w2 prime. So one thing to notice here is that when we evaluate the derivative of f with respect to each of these independent variables, we are evaluating at the steady state value, and those are going to be constant values. So the only time varying quantities in this new model are going to be associated with the deviation variables and those all enter linearly. So the reason that this model is going to be linear is because we're using only a first order Taylor series approximation. If we wanted it to be more accurate, we could include higher order terms, but then we would be back to having a nonlinear model. Now let's go ahead and plug in our function f and its derivatives into this approximate linear model. First, we need to evaluate this function at its steady state value. But the function is just the time derivative of x. And at steady state, we can plug in 0, dx dt equals 0, and the bar variables on the right-hand side. And so this term is always going to be 0 for any linearization around steady state. So that's very convenient. We can always cross off that term as long as we're linearizing around steady state. But we do need to go ahead and evaluate these derivatives. Now, the first derivative is going to be the messiest because we have 1 over v in our differential equation. We'll go ahead and evaluate the derivative of f with respect to v at steady state. So we're basically just going to rewrite all these other terms that we're going to hold at their constant value for this derivative. And then we're going to need to take the derivative of 1 over v. So we're going to get minus 1 v to the minus 2, and we're going to evaluate that again at the bar value. And then we're going to multiply this entire derivative, df dv, by v prime. So that is our first term. We need to do that three more times. But fortunately, the function is not as complicated in order to do that. So that is the linearization for any arbitrary steady state of the system. But let's plug in some numbers. So we'll use the same values that we had used previously. And from these 
steady state inlet conditions, we can then calculate the steady state outlet conditions. So W bar is just the sum of the two inlet streams. So that's four kilograms per second. And X bar is 0 0.025 which is an intermediate value between x1 and x2, which we are blending. Now that we have numerical values for our bar variables, let's go ahead and plug them in. So now we can go ahead and simplify that. It actually turns out that the V prime term cancels. We have a zero 0 0.075 term here and another one here. So those two cancel out and we actually don't have a V prime equation in our final equation. And then we can solve this for X prime and then that's in deviation variables, but then we can go back and solve for X is approximately equal to X bar plus X prime of T. But it is important to remember that this model is a linear approximate model and the approximation should only be good for small deviations from steady state, small values of our deviation variables. That's because the first order Taylor series approximation is only going to be accurate for small deviation terms.